Good night, everybody. Good night, good night, good night, good night, good night, and happy 2023. This is my first video for the new year, and I pray that it goes forth unhindered, and I pray you do get this meat and satisfy your anguish, your mind, your spirit, anything that may be bothering you for the coming days that we just entered into the new year. And you can rest assured that the Lord is on his throne. He is on his throne. He is on his throne. The Lord is on his throne. Yes, yes. All right. Thank you for being here. Thank you for coming in. Wherever you are, I pray that the Lord meet you and satisfy all your thirsty desires, all your desires, I should say, anything that you are waiting for him to accomplish and carry out, I pray he does it. And once again, Happy New Year, and I hope you are well wherever you are. I'm going to pray quickly. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for meeting with me and allowing me to do and to give you honor and to give you glory, faithful God, in, from, from my spirit and in truth. I pray, O oh Lord, that you be my mouthpiece. Yes, Lord, be my mouthpiece, O oh God. Be here with me, O oh Lord, as I dine and give your word, as I break down what you have shared with me regarding Romans 8, 1 through 17 romans 8 1 through 17 faithful spirits i thank you lord for your truth for your consistency i thank you for regulating oh god everything that wanted to hinder me for these couple days oh lord i ask that you continue to nurture me oh lord continue to build me up let me not be wavered oh god in my spirit because of what try to perplex but i pray that your people oh god under this umbrella of divine roots of God, they will be nurtured, they will be supplied, they will be satisfied, they will be protected, that they will see, oh Lord, your truth and your kingship in breaking barriers and breaking yokes. Yes, Jehovah, you are God. And I thank you, Lord, for being the lily of the valley. I thank you for being the way maker, Lord Jesus. I thank you for silencing the sea and the rushing wind, Lord, and the boisterous wave in the name of Jesus. Father, this is a new year and we are the Declaring and we're decreeing your health and strength. That's number one. And we're decreeing and you're and we are declaring your peace. We are decreeing and declaring your substantialness. We are decreeing and declaring, oh God, that you make a way, oh Lord, when it seemed to be no way, when the enemies, oh Lord, is on our heels. We are decreeing and declaring that your presence of peace, the peace that passeth all understanding. O oh Lord, will shift and gear us, O oh God, and navigate us in the path and the way that we should go, that the peace that passeth all understanding would silence our enemies, O oh Lord. Father, you said trials come to make us strong. And I thank you for the trial in 2023 will not overtake us. It will not roll, roll us. It will not roll us over. It will not bring us down to our knees, oh God. But we will be triumph over that in the name of Jesus. We are victorious over anything, oh God. And I pray, Spirit of the living God, that you will continue to be the consuming fire. Now navigate us, oh Lord, and hide us, oh God, in the presence of ha of our enemies. Defeat those giants for us, O oh God, and make a way, Lord Jesus, for us in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I thank you, Lord, from the bottom of my heart. I say thank you, Spirit. Ha! Thank you, faithful God. Thank you, Redeemer. Thank you, triumphant God. Thank you, Lords of Lords. Thank you, Lord. Anchor us in you, Lord. Anchor us in your word. Anchor us, O oh God, in your presence. Anchor us, O oh Lord, in the things that is kingdom nature. Anchor us, O oh Lord, in the matters that you want us to see and to arrive in. In the matters, O oh Lord, that we need to move and have our being in, O oh God. Anchor us, O oh Lord, in you, faithful Redeemer. Anchor us, O oh God. Make us triumphant, O oh God. Make us the head and not the tail, O oh God. We will lack no good thing, O oh Lord, but polish us in the name of Jesus Christ. Satisfy us, O oh God, 
I ask that you build us up, O oh Lord. Give us a new appetite, a new taste, O oh God, running over in us, O oh Lord. We should not get in, we should be, we should not be weary nor tired to continue to be sovereign in you, Lord. But I thank you, Jehovah. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. For tests and trials come to make us strong. They are not here to make us perplexed or cause us pain. But in times of trials, oh Lord, we will be steadfast. We will be standing. You said to be still. For you are God, Lord, and we're going to trust you, Lord, in 2023 like never before. We're going to wave our banner of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord. We're going to be bolder than last year, oh God. We're going to be bolder in you, kingdom of heaven. We're going to be bolder in what you want for our life. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. Ah, yes. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, most I God. I thank you. I thank you, Spirit of the living God. Keep me and keep my mind on you, O oh Lord. Keep my mind on you, Lord. Keep my body constrained to the Spirit of the living God. Keep me, O oh Lord, holy in the name of Jesus Christ. I will not be tempted to go to and fro, O oh God. I will not be tempted, O oh Lord, of flesh. But I pray that my spirit man, oh God, will take charge and take over and be dominant in everything that wants to pull me back. In the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, Lord. Bless the eras and bless those that are trusting in you, oh God. Bring them up and bring them out of anything that they may find themselves in, oh God. Let the word of God go forth tonight in Jesus' name. In Jesus' precious name, in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus Almighty, I thank you, Lord. Glory. Yes, glory. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Over the weekend, the New Year's weekend, I was in New York City and I met some wonderful women. Um, and I just want to shout out to those women. They have actually subscribed to my channel. You know who you are. I pray that the Lord will continue to magnify himself in you. There was one specifically that I just felt her spirit and I could tell that the Lord is doing something, something fantastic in her life. She rants about Jesus Christ. And I love that. I love when people are on fire. I love when I can I can see myself in someone that love the Lord and is thirsty for the Lord. I pray that the Lord will continue to bless you, 64-year-old looking like 45. God bless you. I should say 60, I'm sorry. You look like 45. And Dolores, I pray that the Lord will continue to do amazing things in your life and just be patient, be still, and have tolerance. I told you that the Lord is teaching you tolerance in this season. And he is. And you shall overcome in the name of Jesus. All right. So get your Bible. Ha. Get your Bible. And we're going to dine in. And I hope you enjoy. And I hope you flex your muscle in the word of God. All right. Be blessed. And it's the scripture is coming from Romans 8. And it's life in the spirit. Right. Um, Romans 8, 1 through 17, that's where the Lord led me and I stopped. So praise the Lord. So the word goes like this. There is, there is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, right? So you don't have to feel perplexed, burdened down. You don't have to feel lack or discouraged. You know, or feel like you're or you're not worthy or sufficient because you want to honor God, because you want to be in Christ, right? There's no condemnation for loving Christ, for being uh, 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 someone that, go please, out my video, <laughs> sorry, someone that loves the Lord, truly, right? Who walk not after flesh, but after the spirit, right? So you're walking after the fifth, the spirit, so you don't have to worry, you're not trying to build up the flesh, but you're building up consistently the spirit man. Two, for the law of the spirit of life in Jesus, for the law 
of the spirit of life in Jesus Christ have made me free from the law of sin and death, right? So because you chose to take on this walk, because you chose to answer your call, because you chose to pick up your cross and walk according to your to the, to the Lord's purpose for your life, right? In the spirit, there's there's freedom, there's liberty, there's life right? There's peace. There's joy, right? When you're walking to the, to the will of the flesh, there's death, there's stagnancy and it's sin, right? There's destruction, right? Verse three, for what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in likeliness of sin. Okay. So three, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. <laughs> anything through anything you're doing through the flesh is weak, right? Anything. Because the flesh, all right, I won't I won't get off course. You're gonna get it. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Listen. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh, right? So Jesus Christ came in the sinful, in the likeliness of flesh, right? But he overcame flesh, right? He buried flesh. Yes, mankind buried the flesh, but the spirit man, they could not kill, right? They could not kill the spirit, right? Because the Lord came in the likeness of flesh, the weakness, the, the thing, the flesh that will go and do what it wants, right? And not be contempt with the spirit, right? Won't be on one accord with the spirit. He put, ex he executed flesh. He over, he tied down flesh. He destroyed flesh and say, no flesh, you're not going to rule me. You're not going to tell me what to do. You're not going to tell me how to move. You're not going to tell me I can't pray when I'm praying you want to sleep. No, right? The spirit man, the spirit of God rose above flesh, right? For that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Five, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. So if you're walking with, if you are, if you love doing things in the spirit, doing things that's contrary to God and his will and a contrary to the spirit man, right? To the spirit of God, you are dwelling in flesh. You're moving in flesh. Everything that you do is because your flesh is telling you to do it, right? It's because you want to do it. You're not operating and moving according to the will and the authority of God, right? So you will cons you will constantly do the things of the flesh. You will constantly mind and have business to the things of the flesh, right? When you are of the spirit, you will move and dwell in the heavenly things. You will move and dwell in righteousness. You will move and dwell in kindredness, right? To one another, you'll be obedient, right? You'll be respectful. You will not be boisterous. You will not be envious. You will not be malicious. You will not be whoring down the place. You will not be addicted to these things, right? Of the earthly realm, right? And that's the flesh activities. Five, for they, sorry, six, for to be carnal minded is death, but to be spiritual minded is life and peace. Carnal minded is the spirit, is the fleshly nature of, of human beings, right? They're carnal. They're, they get angry quick. They're quick to, they're triggered just like that. And then comes a, a negative tra train reaction, right? Carnal spirit minded is of the things of the spirit, right? There's peace, there's life, there's guidance, there's obedience, right? There's a structure of doing things, right? The right way. Right? Seven, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Because the carnal mind, the flesh, the fleshiness, the flesh is enmity against God. The flesh 
wars with the spirit man. The flesh does not want to obey the spirit man. The flesh wants to do what it wants to do. The flesh wants to go out at night and cheat on their wife and cheat on their husband. The flesh is addicted to social media um, strippers. The flesh is craving after these things. The flesh will tell you to backslide. The flesh will tell you to go do this and to go do that. That is contrary to the spirit. That is contrary to righteousness. This is what verse seven is saying, right? Verse eight. So then they that are in, in the flesh cannot please God, which is true. Nine, but he are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you, how if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Verse 9, I'm going to read it again. But he are not in the flesh. Those are all the saints of God, the children of God, right? The men and women of God, the elders of God, that's in Jesus Christ, right? Um, but they are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. <coughs> If so, be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. So the Spirit of God dwell in you, right? You're not walking in the flesh. You're walking in the Spirit, right? If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So if you're not filled, if you don't have the Spirit of God moving and operating in you and guiding you and instructing you and fashioning you and directing you, you, the Bible is telling you that you're not of Christ, right? If you're not baptized and, you know, people believe not that they need to be baptized. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Because it's like when you're baptized, when you're being baptized, when you're baptized, when you go in the water, it's like you're also being resurrected from the grave, from the past, from the dirt, from the gut, from the filth. Right, you're washing all those sinful things away. And now, when I got baptized, sorry, I'm gonna stray a little. Well, I remember when I got baptized in 2015. The next day, right, I can remember walking to. I I used to walk at that time and take the bus, public transportation, and I remember being on the bus, and it's like literally, I can feel some type of transformation happening within my flesh like i can feel like my flesh you know when a curtain is coming down after a show or at a theater and the curtain is coming down because the show is ended so that's how i feel like there's a newness coming onto my flesh right and i felt it the first couple days after being baptized i just needed to share that all right um verse 10 if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Righteousness. If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. Right? So if you have the spirit of God in you, right? And you're still warring with the spirit man. You're still lusting. You're still doing things that you're not supposed to, right? It's saying that the body is dead because of sin. The body is dead because of sin, right? So Christ is in you, right? The body is being, like I said, executed, right? Because of the sinfulness of that's within the flesh, that's within the body, right? So it's telling you, if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. I hope you got that. Because of the sinfulness that's attached to the body. The things that the body wants, the things that the flesh cleaved, right? To and want or desire, right? 11, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body, bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So I just, that's like a shadow of turning for me um, right here. If the spirit of, of him that raised up Jesus from the dead. So as I mentioned, when you get baptized, you go down in the water, right? And you're washing away, you're, you're, you're transcending, right? 
before you trans started to transcend, you clean the guck and the filth of the body and the human way or the fleshiness that you've endured and partake in all these things that is kind of catastrophic to you, right? And to your kingdom power and to your kingdom glory and to everything that the Lord wants for your life, right? So he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So going down in the water, right? Being baptized is like a spiritual death right and your and when you get up your body your flesh is being your your bodies are being quickened by the spirit right your bodies are being i don't even know zapped then your bodies is being uh, i don't i don't know what the word to use by the spirit that dwelleth in you so the spirit that is already in you, once you go down in the baptism by the water, you you activate then the spirit. You activate your spiritual side of you, right? I hope you got that. I'm sorry. Therefore, virgin, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after flesh, right? But we are debtors to the spirit. Why? Because Jesus Christ was ransomed, because Jesus Christ was sacrificed, because Jesus Christ put and laid down his life for us, right? So we are debtors to him. We owe him everything that we have. We owe him everything because of this man that laid down his life so we can not be perplexed. So we, yes, you will endure things in the flesh if you're not walking according to the spirit, right? But because he did that, because he was a sacrifice, because he was the lamb slain, right? You owe him, right? It's a great debt that you can't even pay back. So you might as well just be obedient and move according to what he's asking you to do for his will, for it to be well with you, right? 13, for if, for if he live after the flesh, he shall die. But if he through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, he shall live, right? So if you are dwelling in the spirit and you are condemning the flesh, you're feeding your spirit, man. You're mortifying the body. You're mortifying the flesh. You're not giving way to the things that the flesh wants. The flesh wants you to watch pornography. The flesh wants you to be addicted to weed. The flesh wants you to be addicted to alcohol. Mortify this. These things, these bad habits, right? Mortify that the fact that you can't be satisfied with one person. You just, you're like a roaming bull. No. You're opening yourself to so many things and so many attacks, right? All right. 14, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. 15, for he have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but he have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Habba, Father, because we are in Christ, we have all legality to call Jesus our Lord and Savior. Habba, Father, right? Because we mortify flesh and we are dwelling in the spirit, we call our father, our heavenly father, like it's we're calling our earthly father. If those of you still have your father dwelling and moving and strong and strong in the earthly realm, if they have not transcend yet, right? So you have the authority to call have a father because he can identify with your spirit. You are of his. You've been activated. Ha yerebo si. You've been, ah, yes, liber, liberated, right? By the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ha. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. 15. For he have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but he have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Habba Father. Habba Father. Habba Father. Habba Father, here I am. Habba Father, have your way in me. Habba Father, I need your help. Habba Father, this is too much for me. Habba Father, I need direction. Habba Father, subject my spirit unto yours, Lord. We have that authority to come 
to him and call him Abba Father. Yes, he's our Lord and Savior. He is our Heavenly Father. That is a great name. So adapt to that. Call him Abba Father. I thank you for everything. Abba Father, I thank you for my children. Abba Father, I thank you for allowing me to be in my right mind. Abba Father, despite what I endured last year, I am looking forward to the new things and the new avenues and the new doors and new friends that is that will edify my body and help to propel me. Abba Father, I am trusting in you, Lord. Abba Father, he will respond to that great name. Abba Father, he is your father. Know that. 16, the spirit, God, spirit, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are his children. The spirit itself beareth witness to our spirit that we are the children of God. All right? Because your spirit, man, your spirit identify with the Lord, with Abba Father. He knows you. He knows that you are not being wayward. Because you're feeding yourself, you're calling on him, you're praising him, you're glorifying him. You've been baptized, you've been filled with the Holy Spirit. Ah, yes. Ha hallelujah. You've been baptized in Jesus Christ's name. You've been baptized and you have mortified, you have killed flesh. You say, go away from me, flesh. No more will I activate myself in you. No more will I partake in the, lust the lustful things of flesh. No more will I have sex. Men that are not my husband. No more will I give my body to these men. No more will I do these things that is contrary to your will, Lord, that displeased you. Be pleased with me, Abba Father. That is my desire for you to be pleased with me. Jesus. 17. If ch and if children, then ears, ears of God and joint ears with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with him. So if we suffer with the Lord, right, despite the tribulation, despite the lies, despite the setups, despite the condemnation, despite the, tr tr the, 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 the trials that come, despite what the things that the enemy throws at us, right, we're going to abide with the Lord, right, because we have ownership in the kingdom of God. We have our rightful place in the kingdom of God. We are ears and joint ears with Jesus Christ. So anything that the Lord, anything that the Lord does for Jesus Christ, he has to do it for us too. He has to do it for you too. When Jesus Christ was on, the, on earth and I've been, you know, moving and demonstrating and being perplexed and toiled and refused and beat, beat, beat it, right? Everything that he has asked his Lord for, his Father for in prayer, when he is to go away from the noise and be still in isolation to give God time, to give his body, the flesh, to Jesus Christ to rectify it, right? To mortify flesh because I'm sure things that he you know, got, you know, that was around him and the company and the mass, right? Drained his energy, sucked from him, took his virtue, right? So every time he had to go back into his secret place to seek the Lord, to be reactivated, to be full up, to be filled up, right? So that's 17. And it says, and if children, then ears, ears of God and ear, joint ears with Christ, if so, be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together in the name of Jesus Christ. There ends the reading of the word, right? And you suffer with the Lord, you're going to be glorified with him. You suffer with him, you're going to have the reward, the kingdom re reward. You're going to have the inheritance that is due unto you. As he said, my thoughts towards you is of good and not of evil to give you an expected end. If you suffer with him, he will give you that end that you are 
thinking of, that you see, but you have not yet reached or touched. If you suffer with him and stand still, if you suffer with him and go through the trials and the tribulation, if you suffer with him and take up your cross and walk and say, Abba, Father, yea, though they slay me, yea, though they toss me, yea, though they condemn me, yea, though they talk about me, yea, though they ridicule me, yea, though they laugh and mock, mock me because of this, is what you call me to do. I will stand because I know that the reward is good. I know the reward is good. Ha, yes. Harebo, see. You will see if you st stand. Stand firm. Stand firm with the Lord. And the Holy Spirit always gives me when he when I read and meditate, right? Um and I've had this word since, I'm sorry, since December 29th, I woke up early in the morning and I had this word, so I had to release it. But because I went to New York City, came back and, you know, going through the, the, the notion of the New Year's and being attacked spiritually and stuff like that, like I literally have to stay consecrated in the word of God prayer without ceasing because, because I'm doing this because I'm not willing to move and have my being in the flesh and the things of the world right to impose in those things anymore i do go through spiritual attacks i do see it and the lord shows me right and um he gave me this right so it says condemnation the expression of very strong disapproval in other words criticism 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 because christ died for us he already bear all that for us right because christ died for us he bear he was over he was the overcomer against sin he overcame death for us he overcame the trials and the tribulation for us because he rose right because the spirit ascended back to his rightful throne, we do not have to be ashamed of his identity. My God. And your revelation of him. You don't have to be ashamed of Christ. You don't have to be ashamed to say, I love Jesus Christ. You don't have to be ashamed to praise the Lord when you are walking on the street and the Spirit says, stop and pray. You don't have to feel ashamed to lift your hands and say, sweet Jesus, have your way, right? Because when the Lord does that, he knows why he's doing that. When he leads you into a certain region and he said, pray, you could be on the subway and you are led to pray. You're breaking off a lot of curse. You're pushing back the enemy, right? This is why it's important to be obedient, right? You don't have to be ashamed. You don't have to be ashamed of his identity and our and our revel and the revelation of him. You do not have to feel like a mad person because you choose to walk aligned to the will of God. You do not have to be ashamed to speak about your Lord and Savior. You do not have to feel burdened down because your mates and friends are living it up and exploring the four corners of the earth. Yes! <clears throat> you do not have to be ashamed. I'm going to read that again. You do not have to feel burdened down because your mates and friends are living it up, living it up, exploring the four corners of the earth while you are walking to Bible study, are living in the upright nature of what you're called to do and be. Your heavenly father won the fight against the naysayers. Amen. You, so you do not have to feel perplexed to serve him. When he rose from the grave, you became victorious over the works of the enemy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Over the bonds of captivity, right? When he rose above, when he rose from the grave, you became victorious i became victorious yes over the works of the enemy over the bonds of captivity because christ rose 
You do not have to feel pressured to walk after lust and waywardness. Because he rose, you do not have you are free to serve the Holy One of Israel. Christ. So sorry. It says, Because he rose, you are free to serve the Holy One of Israel, Christ. Christ was sent in the likeliness of sinful flesh. That's what we just read, right? In verse 3 of Romans 8, right? It says, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeliness of sinful flesh. Okay? Christ was sent in the likeliness of sinful flesh. Holy one was wrapped in flesh like you and I. Condemned flesh. Sinful nature. So, sorry. The, only, the holy one was wrapped in flesh like you and I. He condemned flesh and sinful nature. This shows us we too can be overcomers once our mind are made up to live according to the spirit. Do not allow the flesh to create havoc in your lives. Imagine being trusted in a garment that will likely to fail you if you refuse to keep it clean, keeping this garment pressed from wrinkles, if you refuse to take proper care of this said garment, it will expose you. Ha, ah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Imagine being thrusted in a garment that will likely to fail you if you refuse to keep it clean, keeping this garment pressed from wrinkles. If you refuse to take proper care of this said garment, it will expose you. And that's flesh, right? Right here, what I just read, the Holy Spirit is talking about the flesh. If you don't kill flesh, if you don't mortify flesh, if you don't do the spirit work, ha, and let the spirit man grow and have its being and be more impactful and dominant than the fleshful nature of the body. Flesh will expose you. Flesh will expose you. Yes. Flesh will expose you. And that's the truth. My God. Your soul is wrapped within the garment of flesh. A weak material. If not fed the meat or drink. The material will begin to worn out. Stretched. And lose its elasticity. Amen. That's true. Right? It's important to use good laundry soap. The word of God. Some materials requires to be taken to a dry cleaner. The tabernacle of God. That's the building for fellowship. <laughs> the Holy One was wrapped in the material flesh. He prayed regu regu regularly. He did great things. He fellowshiped one to another. He had time to isolate himself when the noise got too loud he pressed to go back to the altar of god to hear from his father that's when the that's when jesus christ used to evade the crowd evade his disciples and go off in the mountains right and be there in mount zion ah yes right ha ha my God, in the Garden of Gethsemane, right? He will go off and pray. He will go off and seek the Lord. He will go off and be rejuvenated. He will go off and feed his spirit, right? Because you can become weary when you are amongst flesh and you're trying to groom and you're trying to correct, right? Things can get rubbed off on you. Uh, yeah, yes. 
things can get rubbed off on you. So consistently, you have to find back your way to the altar, my God, right? You have to find back your way to the altar and rejuvenate your spirit. Fill, get filled up again. Get filled up again in the name of Jesus Christ. Get filled up again in the name of Jesus Christ. This he had to do to recharge, to elevate and strategically execute the plans in order to complete his purpose sent. Right? So right there, the Holy Spirit was saying he had to go back to the altar wherever the Holy Spirit had led him. While he was on earth, the quiet one-on-one -on -one time, right? He evaded the mass. He evaded. A lot of times he was amongst people and he was said, I have to go. Don't follow me. I'll meet you there. Go before me. I'll be, I'll meet you there once I'm done here. Or he would say, come and keep watch, right? A lot of times they couldn't keep watch because they're flesh. But he, he too was flesh in, in spirit the spirits of God in flesh, right? But because the spirits of God created flesh, flesh could not overcome Jesus Christ of Nazareth, right? Because the Holy One, his father, the author, the finisher of our faith sent him for a purpose. So this thing, could flesh could not overtake or have the mina, dominion over him, right? So this is why he had many times to go into the secret place and to pray, and to fast, right? Amen. Christ being wrapped in sinful flesh, executed flesh, rose above the deceptiveness and the execution of flesh, mankind, right? So here, mankind, flesh, again, wanted to kill what they did not understand, wanted to kill what they could not sabotage, wanted to kill what they could not control. Ha, yereboshi, hallelujah. Flesh, mankind could not do the things that they wanted to do with him because of the power that was on the inside, because the spirit was filled, because the spirit was superior, because the spirit which was majestic, right? Jesus Christ winning against flesh is a shadow of turning, right? Is a shadow of turning. I'm trying to remember, is a shadow of turning. So for us, Jesus Christ winning against flesh, we too can have dominion and we too can be, we too are victorious over flesh because he overcame flesh right? Came, the spirit of God came in flesh, but overcame flesh, right? Had dominion over flesh. So if we, our spirit, you and I are wrapped in sinful flesh, why can't we be overcomers? If he did the groundwork for us, he did the task for us, right? So we too can be still, we too can close when the, the whispers are telling us and our mind is telling us to do something wrong. We too can say no. Get thee behind me, Satan, right? I will not partake in that thing. I will not go over there and kill. I will not rob my pop and mom's stores. I'm sorry. I will not because the said store is feeding my children. The said stores are sacrificing to stock up their shop so I can go there and purchase necessities that I need to cook for my house. So why would I go and rage against them? Why would I, why would I let this flesh rage and corrupt me to do evil? Right? I hope you're getting that. Flesh has no power over the one who created flesh formed and framed by his words, right? Amen. Jesus Christ is a depiction of what we are. Holy nature, royal priesthood, wrapped in sinful flesh, right? As I explained, he too was here amongst the living, what still is, but in flesh, walking and having, having his being, right? Shearing and, and releasing those from bondage and healing, right? And he too was overcome. He was overcome. He was an overcomer over flesh, right? If you do all to stand and press towards the mark, we too 
you too are victorious. Not can be, but will be victorious. Jesus Christ already accomplished and won the task, making us overcomers. Amen. The flesh has no partnership with God. It, if it did, we would. The flesh has no partnership with God. If we did, we would not need the spirit. Flesh wouldn't. Flesh would know exactly how to function, right? There wouldn't be any wrongdoing because the flesh is singular. But because the spirit needed a face, it needed a frame. Because the spirit needed a body to build up. Because the spirit needed a body to uphold its posture. This is where the conflict arises. The warring of the flesh with the spirit. I hope you're getting this. Because the spirit is inside the body, the spirit requires spiritual food and supplements. If you're not feeding the body these supplements, the spirit becomes mal malnourished, fatigued, and starved. Not, no, you give way to the flesh to reap havoc, right? So if you're not feeding the spirit man, if you're not partaking in the word, if you're not partaking partaking in fellowship, if you're not fasting, if you're not praying, if you're not seeking the Lord daily, he said, take up your cross daily and follow me. Not sometime, not part-time, not few days, not a few hours, daily, daily, every day, right? If you don't do this, you give way to the flesh. Your flesh will become more boisterous. Your flesh, your flesh will become more warring with you. Sometimes you'll be conflicted, right? All right. The flesh do not know the way of God. It is enmity against God because it is not subject to the law of God. Flesh is not subject to the law of God. Can a car be filled with gas if you do not place the gas nozzle inside the gas, right? If you don't take up the gas nozzle from its station and and input it in the gas tank hole, right? And squeeze the release trigger for the gas to flow into the car, right? The gas, your, your car is going to be empty. So it is with your, your, with you. You are required to feed your spirit. You are required to edify. You are, ed you are required to edify yourself. How can one accept their flesh to be subject, subjected, filled with the word of God, filled with substance of God, if one is not inviting the spirit of God? And if one refuse to feed the spirit man with healthy food, right? How can you know God? How can you say God is directing me? How can you say God is the head of my life? Right? If you're not partaking in the spirit, if you are not lifting up the spirit, if you're not magnifying yourself in the spirit, right? You're refusing everything that the spirit is trying to teach you. You're refusing the spirit way. You're refusing the guidelines of the spirit. You are refusing the supp the supplement of the spirit, the food, right? You are refusing the things of the heavenly to build up your spirit. Right? To be victorious, to be a conqueror, to be a warrior. Right? Positive vibration. Po sorry. The word of God. Sorry, I'm going to go back a little. And if one refused to feed the spirit man with heavenly food, the word of God, positive vibration, positive communication, godly things. Right? One will not be able to please God. When you refuse to reside and walk with him, flesh is flesh and spirit is just that. Your, your strength, your spirit resonate with the spirit of God. When you're not operating in the spirit, you have no direction, no reasoning ability. No life outside the spirit is death and condemnation by the enemy, which will use you up and toss you aside once done with you. If you're not in the spirit, how can you please God? Who you are refusing, 
if you're not in the spirit, how can you please God who you are refusing? How can you see your way when the light of God is not in you? You are, you are not being guided when you're operating in the flesh. You're, you're asleep, not able to see nor perceive the time or what is to come. Right? And that's the truth. That's the truth. The spirit is a regulator. Right? The spirit regulates the flesh. So this is why you have to position yourself in the spirit and the kingdom business. Right? The flesh is disobedient, which will lead you to keep stealing, keep whoring, and sowing the flesh and sowing to the flesh of destruction. The flesh has no the flesh has one aim to keep you away from what is right righteousness to keep you from knowing whose you are and knowing your purpose and and fulfilling that the spirit needs a body but not for this body to give way to the flesh right but his intention was to help the spirit move and accomplish i hope you got that if you do not feed your spirit in heavenly conducts, your flesh becomes a junkie to the earthly things that is contrary to the likeliness of God. Feeding the flesh only produces things of the flesh. Amen. My God. This will be your big downfall and your destruction of your soul. You feed the spirit heavenly meat. You produce that which is heavenly. Amen. And that's the truth. The spirit identifies with the spirit. We were created to live after the spirit. This is why it is important to mortify the deeds of the body, pure, fast, pray, so the things you struggle with can be loose from you, like a shoe untie from your feet, so you will no longer desire to partake in sin anymore. I love that. When the Holy Spirit gave me that, I said, wow. Okay, so if you pray fast and you're doing everything that you're supposed to do, right? He gave me the, the comparison to a shoe that is, if it's not laced up, right? You can't walk comfortable in that shoe. You're going to be tripping over yourself. <laughs> you're going to be bucking your feet. The shoe's going to be falling back when you, your heel is up and lifted, right? Right? So he's saying, if you're doing everything in the spirit, right? The things that you, the flesh will no longer have authority over your body. The flesh will no longer have, you know, wants to war with you because you're doing everything into the, of the spirit, right? The flesh needs your spirit to guide the body. So feed, the flesh needs your spirit to guide the body. So feed your spirit and the Lord will direct your path. Feed your spirit and live and have peace. Feed your spirit and renounce the way of the flesh. Thrive to please God who sent you and framed you to, to, accomplish, his, to accomplish your heavenly duty. Feed your spirit. Build up your spirit man and put flesh in subjection to the authority of God. For his compassion faileth not towards you. Your outcome in life depends on you. You will fe will you feed the spirit or let flesh pin you down? That's a question for you tonight. I want to know in the comments section. Will you feed your spirit or let flesh pin you down? There ends the reading of this word that was given from Romans 8. 1 through 17, and I pray that you are blessed by it. I pray that you understand life in the spirit, right? And life outside the flesh, right? What the spirit requires of you. And if you're not dwelling and moving and being mobile in the spirit, the flesh will overtake and overpower you, right? You will reap the things of the flesh, instead of the spirit if you're not living and having your full being in the spirit of god hallelujah faithful god i thank you for tonight i thank you for the word that has gone forward i pray that the ears that will receive it will 
be edified by it. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you will keep them, that you will fashion them, that you, mighty God, will shake every tree, O Lord, and restore your peace, your solemn peace, O God, in their lives. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to just sit here. Thank you for life, it's life, oh God. Thank you for just loving me the way you do and trusting me and forgiving me because I used to partake in fleshly things. I used to let flesh override my spirit, man. I know what it is to partake in the fleshly things and I kept reaping the same reward right? When I partake in fleshly things, I kept seeing the same outcome. I kept arriving at the same door, the same exit, the same turnaround, the same turn about, um, turnpike, right? When I kept partaking in the fleshly things, right? And I've made a vow that no one is important than God, than Jesus Christ, than the Holy Spirit. I don't want to disobey the Holy Spirit. I don't want to know that I'm living contrary. I've done that too many times over and over. And the Lord has forgiven me too many times. I fall, I fall short too many times. Living away from God was unsafe for me. And things could have happened to me worse, right? Things I could have met some madman or been killed or raped or something, but the Lord has been too good to me. He has preserved me and kept me. He has guided me. He has nurtured me. He has been my light, the light from the heart, from the pinnacle that guides the ship in the name of Jesus. So I want the Lord to guide me. Hallelujah. So you should desire for the Lord to guide you. Let the light of Jesus Christ ha, move forward in your life. Move darkness out of the path. Don't resist what the Lord is calling you into this year. Let this new year be a year that you say, Lord, I started good last year, but then I ended up bad. I went back to the things that I said I wouldn't do. The things that I, I said that I needed a change from are the things that I said I needed a break from are the things that had me hooked from the bad habits. So this year, Lord, I can't do it alone, Habba Father. I'm going to need you to stand with me. When I feel weak, when I feel like I want that taste again, I'm asking that you make that taste go away speedingly. And calm down my spirit. Calm down my flesh. But it's going to take your obedience. It's going to take your will. It's going to take your drive. Right? And for you to want to do it. To achieve it. And yes, you can. Because Jesus Christ achieved it for us. Right? He showed us that flesh is flesh. The spirit is much stronger. Right? He showed us that. That we too are victorious. Not if we are, but we are victorious in him who strengthens us. So let him be your strength. Let him be your pillar. Let him be your tabernacle. Let him be your praise. Let him be your defense and your meat and your drinks. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Be rooted. Until next time. Much love always.